Hey everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the Mini Delta build. This episode is going to be a little bit more about the frame, linear rails, the end stops, and we're going to just touch on the electronics a little bit. So, you'll probably notice first off this looks quite a bit different. Um, I flipped the frame upside down, and I did that because... One, I wanted more room for the electronics at the top. Got a nice space up here for the electronics. And at the bottom, I don't need to run any wires down here right now. Um, this printer is going to be just printing PLA. I don't need a heated bed. But if you were to add a heated bed to this printer, you wouldn't want the heater in the same place as the electronics. It's just going to make them really warm. Uh, you can see here on my big Delta... I'm going to do the same on this printer as well because if I add a heater to this, it's just going to heat up the base, it's going to heat up the Raspberry Pi, the main board, it's going to heat up the motors. So you can definitely orient this however you like. If you're just going to print PLA and you're not going to have a heated bed, you can certainly flip this around and, and build it the other way I have. You can see here my Delta is still that way and it prints just fine. Um, but just do note if you do want to put a heated bed on this printer, I would definitely recommend flipping it over and having the the double extrusions at the top here. That way you have a lot more room for the electronics. So, next is the end stops. So, I highly recommend using optical end stops for a Delta printer. These are very, very precise and you definitely want the Delta homing very, very precisely at the top. Homing the Delta is what determines the the flatness of your first layer. If you have one carriage here that's homing like right here and all the rest of the carriages are homing up here, your delta is going to be really askewed and then it's going to start dropping down and it's going to print off. Clipper will compensate for that, but just note optical end stops are definitely recommended. I bought a five pack of these off Amazon, AliExpress, anywhere. They're very, very inexpensive. You'll notice these end stops are three wire. Now, Depending on what main board you go with, if it's an SKR Mini or an SKR 1.4 or, um, you know, a Spider or, or any type of board, it may use 3-pin or it may use 2-pin end stops. It's not a big deal. You can convert these to 2-pin and that's what I'll discuss in a later video. So just know that it's not a big deal if you get 2-pin or 3-pin. I'm pretty sure all M optical end stops that I've seen are 3-pin, so just do note that. You can see here I've printed my end stop um, like carriage here. Very, very straightforward. Just one M5 bolt. And the end stop does go on here with bolts. I just have an M3 bolt right through here. And it holds that. You can see here my ABC carriage. When this slides up, it goes right into that end stop. And that's how this printer homes. So nice and quiet, very precise. You'll need three of them on, on the top of the corners here. And just make sure that they're pushed all the way up against this extrusion. Okay, for linear rails, you can see I've mounted them here finally. And I've printed out this um, centering tool. So linear rails don't actually center themselves on extrusions. You actually have to have some sort of tool to actually center them. So this tool just presses on and it locates the rail right in the center of your extrusion. So I'll include, include an STL for one of these so that you can print them. Uh, you can, there's a ton of them on Thingiverse too if you want to use those. And you can see here I didn't put screws in every single hole. Um, I don't really think that's required. If you want to, definitely you can go for it. These are uh, M3 bolts. I just ordered a pack here, just a hundred pack, like I say. These are M3 by six millimeters. Honestly, I would go M3 by eight. These are a little short, they do work, but, and then these are button head. So they, they sit nice and flush in the recess there. So I kind of just put one here, um, another one there and then two at the top just to make sure that it's kind of flush. You can see here um, there's no gap and I don't have all of the screws in there. So so that's for the rails. You can also see here my um, M5 bolts came in as well as my idlers and they actually fit just fine. 
They still rotate. I was worried they were going to hit my desk. So these are M5 by 40 millimeter bolts. And then I just have an idler on here. So that should have my belt line up very nicely with my carriage and also with my motors. As you can see here, I've mounted my motors. You can just order a three pack of these off Amazon, AliExpress. It doesn't really matter what motors you order. They're all generally pretty decent. And then these are 20 tooth idlers. Again, you can basically buy these from anywhere. I have just two bolts mounting in my motors. There, I don't really see the need to put all four in and it's pretty tedious to get these bolts um, actually screwed in because your Allen key can only turn so much and <laughs> it takes about like five minutes per bolt to do it this way. Um, sometimes I can get my fingers in here and I can just manually at least get it close and then it only takes a couple turns to tighten it. So I've just done two here. The motors are definitely completely rigid there. So mounted three of those. Uh, for reference, on a Delta, these are called ABC. So this is motor A, this is motor B, this is motor C. Deltas um, obviously don't use a Z motor. All, all the motors are Zs as well. So when you plug them into your board here, you can see I've just plugged into X, Y, and Z. And when we go to the electronics part and we go to the clipper part, you'll see here that they're just called ABC in the config file. So as you can see here too, this is my SKR Mini E3 version 2. I generally use this board for all my printers. It's just a really nice compact board and it's got TMC2209 steppers already onto it. The disadvantage of that is if one of these steppers burnt out, the whole board is garbage. I haven't really noticed any problems with that. As long as your steppers are not getting hot, you're not putting a lot of current through these, generally it's okay. I'm running the same board on my Phoenix here and it's underneath this glass plate and it doesn't get any cooling and I've got over 200 hours on this printer and it's fine. So definitely uh, there's room here for a fan if you want to put like a desktop fan or something on here um, to cool that if you're worried about that. But so far I've had no issues. But again, you can Clipper supports all sorts of different main boards. Um, SKR is the 1.4, 1.3. Phytech or Psytech, however you pronounce it. Um, they have a couple boards that Clipper fully supports. I'll include a link in the description for a GitHub that shows you all of the config files that uh, Clipper has by default support for. It supports a lot of stuff. You can use even use leftover Creality uh, main boards. Clipper will generally uh, be able to install on those. And then you can see here I have a Raspberry Pi 3. So this is actually what's going to be running my web interface. And this is actually what's going to be running Clipper. This is what does all the processing for this printer. The main board is just a slave in, in a Clipper um, printer. All this does is basically the Raspberry Pi tells this main board what to do and it carries out that task. No processing is done on this board. All the processing is done on the Raspberry Pi. These are much faster than SKR boards. That way you get much faster prints. There's no buffering, all that kind of stuff. So that's the biggest feature with Clipper is it's much faster and it just communicates over USB, you can see here. All right, so that's all for this episode, episode two. If you have any questions, definitely pop them down below. I definitely have no problems helping you out. All right, thanks guys.